unless you feel like the person that you are going to submit to is going to lord over you and use that against you then that's yeah. what but if you think the person thinks of you as the bone of your bone and you are together they wouldn't use that authority over you right okay <laughs> all right <laughs> okay good afternoon good morning and wherever you are in the world this is the drbc singles um platform and this is our before i do podcast today we're meeting virtually we have mr obina dr obina actually is a luke and then we have engineer joshua yeah, hi in the house and this princess so a uh, quick introduction we are a singles group and we have a couple of married people we talk about relationship christian relationship actually our final goal is actually happy homes happy lasting homes till death do them part. yes so today we're talking about submission submission in the house that's a hot topic and we're going to go from a man's perspective and um our brothers here are going to tell us exactly what they think is submission from a man's perspective how do they view it what is submission a woman sees submission as something else and men see submission as something else so i'll give the floor to you anybody that's willing to jump in for me i think submission is very simple and if we are all believers and you are in a godly marriage then that shouldn't be a point of contention at all because it doesn't appear from the bible that it was a point of contention but there are so many ideas there are so many world views that have crept into biblical marriages and christian marriages that has made this issue a very a bone of contention um but i will try to state what i where i stand and where i see things and again much of my point of view will be from my interpretation of what the bible lays for i know <clears throat> for many people when they read 1 corinthians 14 where Ephesians 5 and maybe second 1 Timothy 2 and Paul is seems to be saying something about submission not only in marriage but also in service in church they tend to interpret it in a different way so what do we what is submission um submission for me is that you have a cause to be able to do something and choosing willing not to do it in obedience to somebody that is what you know, take for example if I have hundred dollars. I want to buy a shirt or a dress. My wife wants to buy a dress, and she's not asking me for the money. She has her own money, and she shows me and says, "Oh, babe, oh Joshua, I want to buy this particular dress." And I say, "I say that, um, maybe you probably want to wait, or you don't need a particular dress." And she says, "Okay, if you said so, sure." And she doesn't, as opposed to she doesn't have the money. and she is asking me for the money to buy the dress and i say that oh you don't need the address and she complies the latter example i don't think of it as submission but the first part i would think of it as submission because she has the ability to do something and she chooses willfully not to do it and so that is what i see as submission and somebody said something which was very interesting and it's they liken Christian Christianity or our work with God to be something of a military exercise you know warfare the bible talks about warfare and so and we know that in military there are others in it you know there are ranks and things like that it doesn't mean that somebody is superior but for the purposes of discipline you report to this person and that person and if you bring it to the bible when Paul was stuck like especially Ephesians 5 talks about women submitting to the husband the husband submitting to Christ and 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 that he seems to be laying out a particular order but the most interesting point is that Paul at the end says that each and every one of us should be submitted to ourselves and so why did Paul have to lay out something that looks like a hierarchy although I wouldn't probably classify it as that it's just so that order will prevail in the home and for me if If a woman is born again and they are busy serving the Lord if a man is born again and they are busy serving the Lord there is that love and out of that love comes that submission if i want to lord over my wife and demand submission then there is something wrong fundamentally and so 
that is how I see submission. This will probably be my opening remarks and I can come back to it later on. Right, yeah, that's a, that's a fair point. And I, I like where you said that the lady has money, she could have bought it, but she submits to your um, suggestion to wait, right? So that's very, very willful. And I, and I like that example, really. Robin is nice laughing, so I think he disagrees or he has another point. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Why, why, why I laugh is... I tell people, I say, I'm not polit I'm politically incorrect. I'm religiously incorrect. I'm just simply biblically correct. That's what I try to be. Mm -hmm. You know, the, we are trying to dance around words and terms. And, but Joshua used a very good uh, and interesting example, the military. Isn't it interesting that in the military where you have many men, they don't argue about this issue of authority. And once you have authority, there is submission. They are like two two parts of the same coin. If you have, if you say someone is an authority, what it implies is that people submit. It's as simple as that. You can't say, "Oh, we all submit." You know, people as people have used this analogy. They say, in a company, there's always only one CEO. There might be different. No, but they, recently, no, 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 they no. have co-CEOs. No, I understand. That is just a game that they are playing. Essentially, there is one CEO. There might be 10 co-CEOs. There is one CEO. We, we all know it. We don't need to say it out loud, but the truth is there is one CEO. There might be different directors on that team, but there is only one CEO. It's just like saying... Oh, and, and, have... and that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, there are many directors, but... Yeah, exactly. Recent, so, models, recent models, they have different co-CEOs. No, they, are just trying to be, they are just trying to be politically correct. <laughs> let's, let's call it a speed is speed. Let's leave that. I don't agree with that, but yeah. Okay, fine, fine. Mm. Let's 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 move on. That's so a traditionalist back, view, though. Go ahead. Go. Let's continue. On the judgment, they will answer the difference between traditionalist and modern. Let's continue. Mm -hmm. So, in the in the concept of um, submission, mm -hmm. the way I'm going to approach it is, you know, at times Jesus Christ will say, "Have you never read?" Mm -hmm. In the in the beginning, mm -hmm. let's go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. All this whole thing, all this whole shenanigans and everything. What what was the origin? Genesis mm -hmm. chapter one and two. Yeah. In Genesis chapter two, particularly, God was specific. He created Adam first. Mm -hmm. For for reason best known to me. Remember in Genesis chapter one, when he was talking about the creation of like the animals and all, he created them like with the two genders together. It's, it's, it wasn't said explicitly, but it's implied in Genesis chapter 1. Because we did not hear any other subsequent address on that issue. But when it comes to the case of man, in Genesis chapter 2, he said he formed, he made man out of the like the ground mm -hmm. and breathed into him. That is mm -hmm. Adam. After he made Adam, then he said, oh, that Adam needs an help. I, it's, it's very interesting. When I follow that, so he says that and they, they look for help suitable to Adam in some translations they couldn't find. So God put Adam to sleep and made an help meet for him. So the, what I'm trying to draw attention to is, to me, it seems like that concept of help that God had in mind at that beginning is tied into this concept of submission because... The concept was already existing even before the fall. So it wasn't as if that, oh, the fall now, because of the fall, that was why we have this issue of submission in the home or in the marriage. No. no that, I will push back on that. No, no, no. <clears throat> before you push back, I'm going to draw our minds to what Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians, if I remember correctly, 7 or yeah. 11. 11. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's 11. If you look at the analogy Apostle Paul made in 1 Corinthians 11, look at what he said. He said, the head of Christ, the head of the woman is the man. The head of the man is Christ. The head of Christ is God. The question I have for you, did that happen before the fall or after the fall? Wait, wait. And so, so it's very interesting. So the head of Christ is who? He says God. Yeah. And so, uh, and so are you saying that in the Trinity, there is that hierarchy? The hierarchy came because he came as God-man. So Christ now, 
at the right hand of God is God man. He's no so, longer. So, so wait. So before Christ came into yes. into the world, what was he before that? He was the Word, based on what Scripture says. And th- that's why there are some things that are not made explicit. And so wait. So the God the Son, you are saying that God the Son became God of a Son after Christ came to earth. No. What? Well, yes. How and like so before it, then, what yeah, was no, he? No, no, it, it, it depends on how you... And, and I wouldn't want us to hang up on that. That was not exactly, the point. The exactly. point that I wanted to bring out, because you 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 are it's creating a hierarchy. A hierarchy yeah. And I, you I are understand, saying that in the Trinity, there is a hierarchy. So Christ, so no, where no, does no, the no. Holy Spirit play? No, no, exactly. You are, that's, not the, that's not the question I want to answer, because it's not the question... I think that applies to this because if you if you bring it because if you don't then, answer that question then the idea of the hierarchy that you are painting will then come and i now, want to no, turn no. to the way okay. just hold on yeah keep on saying i'm just opening the one corinthians that the point, you mentioned. The, the yeah. point i'm trying the point i'm trying to make is i'm trying to lay it out as the scripture lays it out remember mm-hmm. the bible tells us deuteronomy 29 29 the things that the, are revealed yeah, I, it's on to us. There are I'm, hidden I'm, things I'm, that I'm are on to God. Yeah, I'm, base, I'm basing this um, point simply on the things that are revealed, because based on the question and the angle you want to take it to, the question is now: if there's that hierarchy, where is the Holy Spirit in that hierarchy? But my understanding and what I'm trying to say is: remember, the Bible tells us that marriage itself is a mirror of. The relationship between Christ and His and church, church. Yeah. and that was not an it's afterthought. Yeah. That was not an afterthought. It mm-hmm. already existed even yeah. before creation. Yeah. So you see, the question you are asking me to me, but, and that's why. I, but but what does that mean when they say marriage is a signpost of Christ and the church, mm-hmm. right? Because you know, in in the old in in God's creation, heaven and earth, man and a woman, marriage, yeah. and so. And so there is something that seems to be going on. And you said something that I want to, and that is your own interpretation. I want no, it no, to no. be clear. I want, I want in to, one, I want to, when God want made to. Adam and Eve, there was no sense. Yeah, Adam, seem, Eve seems to have come after Adam. Yeah. But it was very clear that the instruction came after the fall, right? Yeah. When Paul is reconstructing what, what instruction the instruction that Eve is going to be, the man was going to be over, over Eve. Her. Yeah. That was clearly that was as a punishment. result of the fall. Yes, that no. was a punishment. No. Was where in where would you where was it point said to in that? Because no. you want to be true to biblical exactly. scripture. That, is, and that so was that was what I wanted extrapolation to, is different what from what is already written. Yeah. That was what I wanted to clarify when I was trying to right. stop you initially. Okay. So what I wanted to clarify was that the, the that structure was already there. Now, what happened after the fall? If you want, you can read it clearly. Read Genesis 3, that specific place. Read what it says. Mm-hmm. If you read what it says, it more or less it was trying to, what it was trying to say is that, he will re, he's reinstating what has happened. No, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. What what that place is suggesting is that because of the fall, this is now this is now what the woman will try to do, but it's not going to work. Read it, you'll see what I'm saying. It's more like saying that no, the woman, he 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 God is, well let's attend to it. God it. is God is very clear about it. He says yeah. that your uh, yeah and but and desire, we'll come back, read it, read it. Come no, back read to it. the we will come back to the help meet part too as well. Okay. That how you are interpreting that part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, I read um, Genesis three verse sixteen. On, unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Yes. Yeah, and so, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, curse is the ground for thy sake. In this, in sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days, tons and blah, blah, blah. And he, the Bible goes on and on and on. And so I am just trying to, I'm struggling with what you are trying to say there. What I'm trying to say is, how would I put it now? I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay in a particular line, but you're trying to buy, you know, take out branches out of it. Now, this place you read, what did it say? If you look at God's response after the fall, it was more like dishing out the repercussions of the action. Judgment, yeah. Judgment, yeah, punishment. In Adam's case, it was more more like his work 
that is what he does to either generate sustenance or food. Mm-hmm. That's where his own is primarily. In the woman, it's more of childbearing or childbirth, pregnancy mm-hmm. and the rest. Then in addition to the pregnancy aspect, what was the first is it phrase or clause? It says, Your desire again, shall be thy shall be mm. to thy husband. Mm-hmm. In King James, yes, it might seem to like unclear, but the second part of the phrase now says, But it shall rule over thee. No, it's not a but, it's an end. And he shall rule over thee. And and he shall rule over thee. Do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Genesis 4, the situation with um, Cain and Abel. And God. Mm -hmm. What did God tell him? He said, Sin is at your door, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It reminds me of that one, one side. That's one side. Number two. It reminds me of Genesis chapter 3, the early part. Look at the question I have, and some people have raised it. When Eve took off the fruit and ate, yeah. nothing happened. Nothing. Did you, did you observe it? Nothing happened. It was until Adam ate it. Read it again. You, you observe what? No, I'm saying. no, no. Because, because oh, that it's, it's, it's there is it's, there is there is that presumption that judgment should have come quickly. You know when no, when when no, Job no, no. Me, when Job lie, says that. Okay. Bro Joshua, bro Joshua, don't cut me up. Okay, let me sure. laugh. Listen to my full argument and. Point. Oh, I, I thought I thought you had paused I'm for us done. to respond. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I the didn't first, get a sense. The yeah. first part. The first part is when Eve had. It seems like it seems like nothing happened until Adam ate. Now, wh- why do I say so? If we continue on the narrative, or the narrative, when God came, who did He first call? God knew what happened. God already knew what happened. He did not say, "Oh, Eve." Obviously, it was Eve that first ate, isn't it? He did not go to Eve. He went to Adam and said, "Adam, Adam, where are you?" What did Adam say? Adam gave his response and said, "Oh, have you done this thing?" It, it, it was Adam himself that opened his mouth and said, Oh, is this is the woman that you gave me? He was casting blame. You understand? If you look at that narrative, what I am getting, getting from it is, mm-hmm. God already, look at that chain of authority or responsibility, mm-hmm. however you want to call it. If, if you don't use authority, chain of responsibility, however you want to look at it. Adam was put in charge of the garden. Whatever happens in that garden, Adam will answer for it. That's what it means. Remember, look at, go back to the New Testament in the epistles of Apostle Paul. What did he say? He said, it's the woman that was at fault. That's one yeah, aspect. That is so, first that's one aspect. Two, yeah. That's one aspect. But on the other hand, look at what he said. He said, but sin came into the world by a man. You see these two things, they seem different. He said, it's the woman that was at fault, isn't it? But, but it's sin, not the capital M for man as no, in no, no. mankind. No, no, no. I, I, because I, I, I'm yeah. still no, I'm still trying to understand the whole all thing this, that you are all, saying. All, yeah. this, all this thing I'm saying is that when you look at it, the primary responsibility always falls on the man. He says, if you look at when he was comparing Adam to Christ, he said, because one man sinned, Adam, sin came into the world. He now says, by one man's either righteousness, like I uh, remember exactly what he said, life. Came. Yeah, and again, the, so I mean, people, responsibilities are two different things, though. You can't, no, 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 no. Do you I'm know what I'm about, going to say? Do you know I'm what I'm going to say that you are saying? No, bro, bro Joshua, listen to what I, I, I clearly define this responsibility. I did not just say responsibility loosely, I said primary responsibility. Listen to you can be pri- wait, 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 wait. Because because that's the mistake. You can be primarily responsible for something. Childbirth is the primary responsibility of a woman. It doesn't make her Bro, authority over the person. So Bro, using Joshua, stop, primary responsibility. Stop, no, stop no, play, I'm stop playing word game. It's not word said, game. Said, it's not word game. I said it's I said not word game. I want you to listen. I said in it, the garden. The, in the garden. It could, yeah. In the garden. I agree with you. Charge. It's, so yeah, when I'm saying, when I'm saying responsibility, listen to the cool. angle I'm coming from, I'm, I'm taking it from. I don't yeah. need to be redefining any time I no, say that. No redefinition, no redefinition. But then anything that you say must be in line with the subject at hand, which is yeah, submission. Exactly. You mentioned the thing about help me. We have to go back to the help me. How yes. were you understanding that idea of the help me? 
What does help like, mean to you, brother Joshua? What does help mean? Help what? means that I am doing something. You're if I need help, I, I need someone to come and help me do what I'm doing. Yeah, but the person coming to help you is it subordinate to you? What, that do, is you the, what do you think? I don't think it's always no, necessarily the so. helping you does not necessarily <laughs> have to be subordinate to you. No, I agree. I agree. I'm that's, saying in the context. I am saying in the context. Which context? This context? And the so context maybe you might Genesis want to chapter two. And so in, in the context, in the, of, con in the yeah, context in the, of Genesis cause there chapter are, two. Cause, cause the, the Hebrew word is as and I was researching on it. Many people think of it as equal. People of think of it as partnership, companion. Okay right okay. and other people it depends on who you are talking no, no, to no, other no. people I, i'm not i'm not i'm not talking about the definition of the word but but it's from the word that you make your case though right i'm talking words have meanings and yeah. you've let me have... learn let me learn you're cutting me off i'm talking about the definition of the word in the context listen when i say when i use a particular word is the reason why i'm using it i said the definition of the word in that context is there because is there a word wait is there a word in the hebrew for subordinate do you I think don't, there is a... i i don't know about that all i'm trying to say is even in different languages even in the english language mm -hmm. one word can have five different five similar meanings five similar meanings but the right meaning will depend on the context in which that word is used that's why I said the definition in that context. Let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Hmm? Mm -hmm. But is he subordinate to us? No, 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 no. It's different. It's different. It's different. Exactly. Somebody, so you understand, no, no, you understand no, no, what no, no. I'm saying. God now. did not say that he will make Adam he, uh, Adam a helper. Because that's, that's help the thing. Because the helper, the helper that you are translated you are looking at it from that's why i didn't say the english i i, I said the hebrew word right yeah. so the helper that you are saying it will, it will be paraclesia right what does that mean in that in it in, in that root word that's what you have to look at it if you are bringing it back to the english and say, and putting spins on it then it becomes no, no, a bit there's, confusing there's no spin bro Paraclesia, you are putting as if as if I've not heard Greek. It's I'm not Greek. saying I'm not saying you haven't heard the other it. one in the in the Old Testament is Hebrew. So let's stop playing these word games. It, All I'm it, saying is that. But what did the Bible not, say? I, the Bible no meat. No, but sister princess, let me read it. Uh, let's let's stop all these games. Let me read it. So that when so, I read so, it, okay, okay, we do understand. We don't need you to read it. I don't. No, I don't need you to it, read it. When I'm talking so about help meet, I don't know what I'm saying. So let the help meet. Me. What does the help meet mean for you? I think you haven't defined it. Yeah, what for is you? Help so all this thing I've been saying, you've not. You, you did not even. <laughs> no, you, you have haven't defined you, it. You've done a lot of philosophy. Where you just assume that. No, I don't okay, think this, it's even this philosophy. Is, this, this is my you, understanding. you just assume that we are going is, with what you are thinking. This but is you my haven't. understanding. This is yeah. my understanding. God, there's a reason why God made Adam before Eve. He could have, there's nothing holding, he could have created both of them together, like most likely he did the animals. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason why he made Adam the way he made Adam and made Eve, or the woman in that case, before she was called Eve. And made the woman slightly different from the way he made Adam. Although from similar substance, but the, the way he made Eve was slightly different. My understanding is uh, about that is God made the man, Adam, first, gave him responsibility over the garden to watch over the garden, do all those stuff. Then eventually he said, Oh, that the man needs an help. Because he was like, lonely. Well, okay, fine. The man needs and help meet for him, then made Eve. Yeah. My understanding, my understanding with that is that God doesn't do things by probability or on chance. There's a reason why he made it that way. That Eve is going to come after the man. There's a reason why and what the reason why I'm saying I'm, I'm glad you quoted Deuteronomy 29, 29. And yes. so, as to the reason why God made that, that is not specific. It's not specified. That's why. And I so, you that. wouldn't want to extrapolate. Let's deal with the things that are specific. And we could say that what is specific, God's idea of why He's creating Adam. Uh, sorry, Eve, He makes it clear. And Sister Princess pointed one of it. And it's also evident in the naming of who Ad Eve was going to be. God didn't call Eve Eve, it was Adam that called her Eve. 
And so God said, I'm going to make you a helpmate. What did what was God's design for that? And we could say that from the naming of who Eve was going to be to Adam. And so that is why I want you, I want you to hinge your case. How the order of things, how why God made Adam first and that we don't know. Deuteronomy 29, 29 said there are hidden things. Let that hidden be hidden. Like and let's Princess, focus on the things that have been revealed. Like Sister Princess said, you at times I think you you hear things I did not say. If you if you follow my line of reasoning, it's clear. I said there is a reason. I'm going to say it again. And listen carefully. There is mm-hmm. a reason mm-hmm. why God chose that order. Mm-hmm. Now the reason I don't know. I said it clearly. I don't yeah, know. But it seems to me like you were building on that to make your point. I am building on it. There's a reason why I'm building on it. Okay, so if you if you don't know why God did it like that, no, no, no. no your foundation is yeah. fallacious. You yeah, don't know. Not, That's the point I'm trying to make. Stable, your foundation is not That's what I'm saying. That let's move from that getting, foundation. You're not and, getting. You're not getting the point I'm trying. If you just can calm down and listen to what I'm saying. I have to. listened to you over and over again, bro. I can't I, said, I can't okay. I can miss it twice. <laughs> let me let me put it this way. Let me put it this yeah, way. sure. I've tried to start from the beginning. Okay, let's leave the beginning. Let's let me now run through the Bible. Let's mm-hmm. run through the Bible. When we keep going through the Bible, we'll go through the books as attributed, the Pentateuch, to the books attributed to Moses. There's a particular thing that happens in, I think, in Numbers, in, I think it's chapter 30. If you read Numbers chapter 30, <clears throat> mm-hmm. you look at how, how the woman, a daughter or a wife, it's the, how she's put under, you can call it authority, you can call it whatever you want to call it. So what that place essentially says is that if the daughter, if the lady... It's in her father's house, meaning she's single, she's unmarried. Yes. If she makes a vow to God and her father hears of it, the first time her father hears of it and her father says nothing, that vow holds. Okay. If, if, subsequent, if subsequently, if her father now says, oh, no, no, you can't do that, she might obey her father, but any consequence of that vow will fall on his head. Now, but... Immediately she's, she marries or she's married. If she makes a similar vow, the first time her husband hears of the vow and says nothing, the vow holds. But that first time, if, that, if the, her husband hears of it and says no, the Bible says God will forgive her, nothing will happen. But if the husband hears of it first time, didn't say anything, and subsequently say no anything, the consequence of that vow will fall on his head. That is Old Testament. Isn't it? Fine, we agree. It's Old Testament. What I'm trying to say is that there are some things in the Bible that they are like sketches. No, I want you to listen to me. I'm very when you let, when you hear let no, him land. Yeah, because because I think maybe Obina is hearing me. I'm not saying that there is no submission. You are no but no I'm just no, arguing trying... the mode of the submission. That is yes. what I'm arguing. Let, let, him, let him point his, <laughs> let him say his point. Let him land. Go ahead. Yeah. Keep going. But don't bring too much philosophy. We know you're a doctor. It's not. But it's not slow down philosophy. Go it's ahead. Not, it's not philosophy because, okay, let, let's let's even go to a. Philosophy. No, now we're talking of submission, and you're talking about this vow part now. There now. is a, there is a reason why I'm painting. I'm sketching all these things. I'm heading somewhere. Keep going, go, go. Do you know? Do you know why I'm doing this? I'm doing this so that I I won't just say something and people will say, "How did it come to that point?" I'm painting all these pictures too. Get to the point where I'm getting to that. Oh, it's because of all these things I've seen a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, down to the New Testament that makes me, even observing real life relationships, that makes me see. Oh, these people say it's like this. I've watched people do it like this. It's not, it doesn't work. These people say it's like this. I've watched it. This one seems to be working. I'm, com- I'm fully persuaded that this is what it is. That's why I'm thinking all these things and coming down. Because like Brother Joshua said in his discussion in Ephesians 5, Ephesians 5 from, I think, 21 or 22 down to 33. Mm-hmm. If you look at that place, Apostle Paul lays, lays, it, uh, lays it out. First of all, he says, 21 or 22, submit yourselves one to another. The question is, what does that mean? Then he moves on and talks about submission in terms of the wife to the husband, then talks about how the husband should lead then. Suddenly he switches and says, oh, but he's talking about Christ the and the church. Christ then switches the church. back yeah. again and says, but let every man... 
Mm-hmm. That's why, you know, I said this thing before. I said to me, this thing is like a mystery. All I can say is, based on all these sketches from Genesis down towards Revelation, based on all these sketches mm-hmm. that we have, the much information we have, we have to pull it together. When I pull it together, what I understand is this, submission. Submission is, if I, if, how like, if I were a woman, I'm, if I were a woman, what I what I'm going to do if I'm going to submit to my husband is I'm going to be an help for him. In essence, what it means is that whatever my ministry is, whatever my goals, aspiration, blah, blah you know, all those things, my goal is to help him. You know, I've had I've had people use this term, and I think I, I the more I think of it, I agree with it. The woman, if the woman, through the grace of God, can find a way to integrate her calling, ministry, whatever you want to call it, into the man's ministry or goal, that's my understanding of being and help, such that both of them will be like an integral part. Now, the, the detail of how old they are going to fit or it's left for them to discuss and pray about it. But my own understanding is the woman's either goal or calling or skills she has or th- those kind of things should so, should should dovetail and fit with the husband the way i understand it and the way i think the bible said it's as if the husband brings the vision obviously vision is like big picture yeah vision is big picture the wife, <laughs> you know it, it's very interesting you, you should have probably started your whole thing with this one because 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 what because <laughs> Because, because to be sincere, and I don't mean it in a negative way, because all the background that you build, it doesn't dovetail into this thing that you are saying at all, at all, at all. Okay, maybe I'm just operating at a different frequency. Okay, fine. Okay, let me let me just wrap up. Let me wrap up with this one. This is, yeah. As if it's resonating now. Okay. My own understanding. <laughs> my, own, my, my own understanding is that the the the. the Okay, I'm going to avoid using the buzzwords. I think that will make it easier for everybody. My own understanding is that... No, it's not about the buzzword. We do get it. It's not about the buzzword. My own understanding is that the husband should, 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 should have, number one, should have a vision for his own life to start with. I agree. If you don't have any vision for your life, you have, you are not leading anybody anywhere. I agree. So, you have a vision for your own life. Now, when you come to that point of, "Ah, I want to marry, that means you have to expand out your vision to include the help that should help you achieve that vision. Now, when you expand that vision to that point, God helping you, the woman or your wife comes in with her, you know, God-given grace, skills, gifts, and is going to fit into that vision, that expanded vision. Because the problem, the way I understand is, if for whatever reason, if she can't fit into that broad vision, there'll be a problem. You people can't be one. The Bible says two will become one. You people can't be one if... You know, it wouldn't work even even in, work. in 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 corporate world when somebody when there is no a culture fed things yes. do not work and so yes. the same thing applies to that i yes. guess for me what I, I i was arguing i do agree with everything that you said here right is is the thought that oh your wife it's subservient to you it's that no. subordinate to you mm-hmm. that is that is the part that when no. people make when majority of people i'm not saying that's what you are saying i'm saying when the argument and the conversation that submission come there is that polarity right you know i've never i've never how i put it said oh the woman is like subordinate after see the thing you know why i'm even arguing arguing all these things it's just yeah. because it's in the bible see if people that know me will know that me just do your own thing and leave me alone. That's the, the only. If if marriage could work like that, I will shut my mouth. Honestly, I will shut up my mouth. But it wouldn't work. Human interaction wouldn't work. work. That's, the, yeah. that's the point. Everybody will be work. pulling. I mean, I'm not married, but I know that when even in it's not going to work. That, that's why world, if people exactly, are pulling. That's why up, I'm work, yeah. I'm laying it like this because I've seen it. It does not work. You know, and no, I like the the part that you said. You know, things have to be integrated right yes they just and, have to be and so that is the understanding that i feel i guess maybe because of the feminist movement has been lost and sadly yes. has crept into christian marriages and these young people have just hung up on it they've missed a the whole picture about a big picture about what marriage is supposed to signify and what really is and they are just 
bring all those corals we see out there like women are supposed to be this would and modeling the distinction of what a man is and what a woman is and their distinct role in that union and becoming that confusing and so that is why i believe that young christian both male and female should be able to to have a biblical understanding of what it means to be a woman what it means to be a man what it means to be a husband what it means to be a wife in a union and i think if we're able to clarify that all some of these arguments because usually when the argument about submission comes i struggle to i mean you know why why is that an issue unless you feel like the person that you are going to submit to is going to lord over you and use that against you then that's yeah. what but if you think the person thinks of you as the bone of your bone and you are together they wouldn't use that authority over you right yeah so but Stephen? most men don't understand it that way they understand it like lordship headship so for so them and and, and 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 it is headship yeah. it is lordship i agree right but then it's how do you wield that lordship how do you wield now, that I, I like to use the example of jesus jesus was the master but he washed the disciples feet and he said it clearly that if you want to be greatest in the kingdom of god you must be a servant but many men today i mean mostly in the you know in the african background most men are not ready to be servant leaders so Sister Princess. they want to be they want to just be um like a, a master and and that's where the term of you know this pidgin language of yoga yoga <laughs> yoga i got it no, no. Sister, Sister, Princess, <laughs> so, Sister Princess but you know it goes both ways there's also the in the culture if you want to look at it in the culture they also call madame there's a reason why it goes both ways remember yes what? but when when we talk about we, i know what we're talking about even even on the group you see it always bit it's like it's bit like people are like no why would you no submission is a topic that uh, many women struggle with and i always tell them that it's because most times women and men don't understand the concept of marriage itself they don't understand what God intended for marriage because Just when God created the woman, He did not, if God wanted Adam to be the lead, like the boss, you know, yes, yeah, yeah. He would have said it expressly, but brought God, great, I see it like God gave Adam a companion so that he was a human being alone you know, and there were only animals around him, right? And so God wanted to give him a woman that is like him that can talk with him that can reason like him so some people will say sister, I'm, I'm bringing sister, up quality but it's not sister princess sister yes. princess exactly that's what i'm saying no remember I'm not bringing up no no I'm I, I, I know companionship is companionship I, I know. Me i'm seeing here i i understand i and understand so what I you're saying the concept of of of, of uh, no. submission for a woman is different from sister princess submission for a man that's why i said let sister us princess. hear from the man and what Sister they, Princess, there's yeah. a reason why I've heard this term often over and over again. And that's why at the beginning, remember what I said. I don't care, I'm politically incorrect. This is what I'm going to say. No matter how we want to paint it, yeah. there's a leader. However you want to define it. Because if you don't define it that way, I, I guess the, the key question now is what kind of leadership? That's the key question. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's where the bone of contention is. Because the problem with this angle is if we remove these key terms it just becomes fuzzy let's keep the key terms but try to clarify the terms because why i say it is this you, you made a good point that oh that the what part of the problem is that people don't even know the purpose of marriage and i'm going to say this thing sorry to say it. I've, I've i've said i've told this i've told people this and i say at times god then the bible says god is our father he did not say god is our grandfather he did not say god is our uncle your uncle, your grandfather can overlook some things and pamper you even if you are misbehaving. But your father will discipline you. I have colleagues and friends when they had problems in their relationships, when they come, some of them crying to me. I used to tell them this one thing. I said, see, this person you are crying after, if he tells you to jump from this place, are you confident that this person loves you and is responsible and is to lead you? That if he tells you to jump, you will jump knowing that he has factored in everything about your safety. 
the challenge I see is that many women, they, like I was, we were discussing offline, they fell in love. You know, God did not, they fell in love. After they now fell in love, they tried to bring God into the whole picture. Saying, but God, why not? No, no. You got, you reap what you sow. Most likely, in, before that, they entered that relationship, God might have placed some things to stop them, to prevent them, giving them some sign, but they ignored it. They went to their relationship and now they are complaining, ah, but he wants to lord it over me. No, he was, he had that behavior in him all the while before you people were married. It is the truth. Because how can someone be living like Jesus Christ before marriage and immediately he married you, he turned to he good? No. After all, but Joshua, you can bear me witness, he's the man that will go and propose, generally speaking. He's left for the yeah. lady to accept or reject. Yeah. So you are telling me, you accepted all those things with all those things and suddenly, oh, the man is trying to lord it to value. No. You, you chose. You accepted. You can't blame God. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think at the end of the day, it's just we believers, and that is part of this podcast too, right? Creating a better vision of what true biblical relationship really is and, and standing on the biblical grounds and saying that, yeah, if you are the head of the home, doesn't mean that you yes. lord over people just like the people in the world do, you know? And I think when all those things are clear and you know that this person you are marrying or the person you are going to be with, is deeply passionate about God and wants to model Christ-like relationship, some of these things that we, we think it's contention may not probably be, right? It's when we are not so sure if I give this person this authority, how is he going to build that power over me? And that is where it becomes an issue. And I agree with Obina. Like, yeah, you definitely knew who the person is yes. and you thought you could change the person and the person didn't change and you are seeing it in full scale and now... Uh, you know but but all is not lost i guess um there is a possibility that the person in such a situation if you're already married and assuming there is no physical abuse and you don't you know how do you turn things around maybe i don't know how to say it but you showing love and care and and hopefully that and through prayers too and hopefully the person's heart is touched and that could change but yeah okay so simply for a man uh, christian uh, submission for a man is um the woman trying to fit into the the picture yes. that the man holds yes right. so what about those men that don't have a picture thank yeah. you sister yeah. princess that was what i was trying to say initially you knew the man did not have pictures like, like you said. It's like you did not even he did not even have frame. He did not even it's have like, frame. It's like you've thrown you a red meat. inside the picture. You've thrown a red meat for Obina. <laughs> no, no, I, because this this thing I'm saying is this: sisters, we pick the people that make them feel that they fell in love. Then before long they start complaining. No, you saw people that were solid people, solid men, but you say, ah, this person is too boring. Okay, it's too boring. Go for the drama, drama king. You get drama. See, this is what I believe. God is not wicked. God is not wicked. God has given. We know what is good. We know what is right. The challenge now is to humble ourselves before God and choose the right thing. After all, Joshua said before the chief I said, "I try. I place before your life and death. Choose." Why I'm saying this thing is. I, I hear this thing or often, women, counseling women, saying, oh, the man must love you. I agree, the man must love you. But the question is, what kind of love? How will you know that this man truly loves you? Is it when he buys gifts, gifts for you? Is it when he visits you often? Is that the love? Is that it? Because where, where I'm saying this thing is that you hear some women say, oh, he just changed after we married. You know, he did not change. He was like that before. It's just that you chose to see what you wanted to see. Because Brother Joshua and I, when we want to talk, if let's say a lady wants to marry and brings the potential suitors to Brother Joshua and I, there are things we'll be looking for. Most likely not what the women are looking for. We'll be looking for a man that is solid. Whether there is trouble, whether he has time, he has integrity to stand. Even if he doesn't have money, he has the integrity to stand and stand for what is right and protect his family. You see, yes. you see the qualities now. Yeah. 
and so I guess Sister Princess has heard from how we view submission. Yes. In from the sister's perspective, I mean, what what the things that we have said, what what is missing? <laughs> I guess in well, in what, yeah. I always say you can't change how a man thinks. <laughs> yes, the, that is mind. <laughs> you can't change a man, right? That's that's how, as my husband would say, a man is wired differently from a woman. So you guys are wired the way you're wired. Nobody can change what a man is. But uh, I just I just wonder about those ladies who have married somebody who kept saying that we will figure it out. We will figure it out right does it mean that those women i mean they didn't hear from god or should those men not ever marry I mean there are some men that it's obvious that i don't know i don't know if i'll say they're lost but they don't really have everything figured out and so sorry, so, so, sorry when you say everything what are we talking about now like you said everything what like they, so that you wonder if they, they really know where they are going to Okay, yes. okay, okay. They don't really know so much of where they're going to. They really don't have so much of a direction. They, they are graduates. Okay. They, they have education. Okay. But when you talk about purpose, purpose is more than just education. Yes. Okay. Purpose is more than just um, educational knowledge yes. or even even being brilliant. Okay. You can be brilliant and, don't, and not even know your purpose in life. You don't know where you're going to. But a woman... That is in that there are some women that you know there are some couples that when you look at them, the woman has a sense of direction much more than even the man. Yes. You know, and sometimes sometimes the woman she, she's there practically is the one guiding the man. But yes. the only difference is that she doesn't show it. She's still, you know, some mm. like respectful to him and but in the room, she's telling you, no, that thing that you are you are saying, that thing, that thing that that way you're going is the wrong way. Like She's maybe she has more foresight and she has seen it. She has seen it. And sometimes when when the man tries to like fight her and wants to go his own way, then he takes the family into peril, you know. And the ones that are forceful, she comes violent and she's offended because maybe you have put the whole money of the family into it and now into Bitcoin. Some men have done that Bitcoin thing. They put the whole family's money. Into Bitcoin. And to me, that yeah. I put my money. Inside Bitcoin, I'm not. I don't have for. I don't have for sight. <laughs> yes, and they've gambled the family's money. They've gambled sister, the sister princess and all of that. <laughs> but my point is, is is still the same. Like for some what, of those, what does that mean? They don't. Huh? No, I thought you were asking what would those what will those women in those situations do, isn't it? Or, I'm, I'm maybe yeah, I'm not I mean, for singles now, she, she's in a relationship okay, with okay. the guy and he's saying, we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. No, she's no, no. My, my, my answer is that she's about to enter one chance. About to enter one chance, okay. Do you, know, do you know why I say so? Mm. Remember, I keep sticking to this, my gun on this talk, that the man is the leader. Okay. So if he's not leading, then he's if not. If you already, if before you enter the relationship, you are seeing that this man is not even. He don't. He, anyway, they say you know in Nigerian slang, pigeon anywhere belay face. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah, you go, if he wakes up, you know. then belay is facing here. That's where he go. Tomorrow he wakes up. So it goes all over the place. Uh, so if you already see that, it's all you already have confirmation from God. Okay, but what about those ones that they they are facing one direction that is the wrong way? But they are obstinate and they're going that way. It's what this has already God has, God, God has already, not going. God has already helped you to show you that he's already facing the wrong way and he's stubborn. Why do you want to go there again? Yeah. You understand? If if you people are not even in a relationship and you're already seeing it, why why even bother? You understand? Why why bother? Okay. Now let's talk about professionally. Submission okay. uh in professions. Now let's I know of a friend who once told me that she wanted to be a surgeon and she, there was this person that wanted to marry her and he, he wants to be a surgeon too but he is telling her to step down and do general medicine yes yes because she's the woman and has yes. to take care of the home yes so now in this case should <laughs> a woman surrender her passion yes and her gift and maybe she might have maybe she would be a better surgeon than him my answer is my answer is yes and surrender her, her her passion her will, I mean, her dream of being a surgeon 
because she wants to marry a man that feels that it's part of submission. No, no, no. Step down and do general medicine so that she can be more available for the family. Sister, sister princess, that's not the way to look at it. The way to look at it is the answer is yes and no, depending on the woman's conviction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be yes, if she's going to step down and go to GP, general practice, mm -hmm. that means she's convinced that God is leading her to marry that man. If she's convinced about that, yes. automatically what it means is that she's going to step down and do that and go to GP. That's number one. She's doing that, like Bro Joshua gave the example. She's doing that not because oh she doesn't have the skills or the brain or you know the the energy or the power. She's doing that under the understanding that this man, like we said before, a few minutes ago, has a broad vision that she's going to fit into. And the man has already told that if you're going to fit into this broad vision, it's better you go this way. What is the broad vision? That he wants to be the soldier? No, he no, 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 no. I, I, the, I think we are... Oh, sorry, bro. You know, I just finished your thought. Sorry. No, no. The broad vision I'm trying to say is that the man has already hinted at it that if both of them become soldiers, because most likely because of the workload and schedule of the profession, Number one, it, it's not going to be a healthy stuff for the family, especially when there are children involved. Because eventually what will happen is children, especially in their young infanthood, will be raised by other people. That's what it means, essentially. So maybe the man doesn't want that to happen. He wants the wife to at least be have more time to attend to maybe when children come. I'm just throwing out some possibilities yeah. because I, I don't know yeah and and it's very it's very interesting robin up brings up raising up kids right because there are two things here there is family and there is call okay. yes and right because you are believe that is what god has called you to become or you believe that that is the natural consequence of your training so you want to get there you know if if we are not able to because maybe even if you become a surgeon you wouldn't be the best surgeon that you think you are going to be right but then That's you have to look at it yeah it is and you have to look at it broadly is this why do i really want this is it because i want it because that gives me some level of status or i personally believe that god is calling me into that to be able to do more exploit if you if you look at it that way your answer that your conclusion that you might come might probably be different and the issue about home like we know even in the world raising up kids is not easy more so raising up godly seeds because for believers we are commanded to give birth not because when a man and a woman meet, the natural thing is for them to give birth. We we are being commanded because Joshua says that the case that the Lord has given me, they are for signs. No, it's even Isaiah. They are for signs and wonders. So for biblical um, children or childbearing, there is a purpose behind it. And so if both of us go that way, is it going to jeopardize that? You know, and that is where two of them would have to come to terms and one would have to make a sacrifice. You're making a sacrifice for the ultimate goal, not because you are subservient, but because you have seen the vision, the broader vision. And you say, if I go this way and I integrate my life into it, at the end, we all come out better. You know, okay. what is the point of both of us going that way? And at the end, we don't have anything to show for. So if, for example, they you know, are but, <laughs> and it's obvious that the girl is much more brilliant. And they are all going for no, be, because because you are thinking that what requires for somebody to have a fulfilled career is intellect, but it's more than that. There are many people that were very smart that they could have become lawyers, but they become frustrated. It's not because of that. It's one thing for you to be very smart and yet not have the fulfillment in the path that you are choosing. It's a complete different. I agree with you. Oh, no. Maybe if you. <laughs> Okay, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. But at the same time, I'm also rooting for those ladies that feel that they wouldn't be fulfilled if they just become a a, a GP because the man said so. Because for, let, 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 fulfillment down. has fulfillment has to do with purpose, right? And purpose has to do with what God is calling you to do. If yeah. you think of it as the general practice is because I could have attained this and my husband caused me to be like this. So yeah, it doesn't, to then you feel that way. But if you think of a, about it in a broader vision, that this is what that helped me to be able to accomplish. 
I, I don't know if there will be that um dishonor. Well, my point is that we should be able to come to a point of maturity as a man that you agree that okay looking at our abilities because i mean before you become a surgeon they do practicals now mm-hmm, do, mm-hmm. just like you've been in in, in a in a in a lab and seen ben carson mm-hmm. working with his fingers and his hands you know obviously that this guy has a mechanism this guy had something right so if a man is able to put his ego down and that's where the bible says submitting yourself one to another and this is about mm-hmm. profession now yeah man and so i go down and say okay you know what and i know only one single man that did that one I've not, I don't know about others. They and they felt that the man agreed that okay, <laughs> based on this one, I'm ready to be. A no, G- see, it's it's very oh. interesting because because yeah, because you are thinking that the reason why the man probably wouldn't want his wife to become <laughs> a surgeon too is because of conflict, like they are competing. There was a comp. That, that's okay. what I sense when and, I talk to those two people. Because, okay, then that like, is a different ego, conversation. I'm the man, yeah, I'm the man. I should be the one doing. <laughs> Oh, and no, you are my is... wife to be, or I want to marry you. You should be able to listen to me. Sister, oh, so that's a, that's a sure. different let me, let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish my point. Where that okay. I started yeah, with. sure. Remember, I said the answer is yes and no, and, and no, depending on the mm-hmm. woman's conviction. There's a mm-hmm. reason why I give the answer, sister princess. I keep saying it. All these examples you have, you have, you've been bringing up. Do you know what I notice common to all of them? Mm-hmm. The women are trying to eat what doesn't belong to them. Okay. What does not belong to them? <laughs> Bro, Joshua mentioned something. He said, calling and purpose. If you have, if the woman is fully persuaded that God wants her to be a surgeon, if she's fully persuaded about that, then she won't be confused about this relationship stuff. In fact, the relationship stuff is, a, is an obstacle. So she should move on to the next person. Of, of course. Why waste, why waste time and resources? I mean, we won't be, even be having this discussion. Because the, the way I look at it is, if she's convinced that God is telling her, this is the man you should marry. And the man has, see, men, like your husband used to tell you, men and women were wired differently. A man might tell you something, one sentence, but he, it took him two weeks before he formulated, he formulated that one sentence. He did not just tell you that one sentence because oh, he just thought of it uh, in the past one minute. So if the man has looked at all these things, even if the interesting thing Brother Joshua was raising, trying to draw your attention to the bible says in ecclesiastes 9 11 the race is not to the swift the battle is not to the strong you can be skillful in that surgery and surgery you think oh you are going to do world class stuff you enter there your own has finished so it's not necessarily about skill that's why i say if the lady is fully concerned persuaded that god is leading her to marry that man essentially what she has to do is like you said they discuss if the man says okay yes i've heard you are, you are skilled and everything but this is how the thing is switch to this one so that at least things will work out it's a different situation if the man is just like um, you must do this one without any you know reason or any just at his whim that one is different i'm talking about someone the man telling her that it is because of this that you should consider going into this area so that these things could work okay yeah, I knew, I knew, I knew of a story that the woman was a postdoctoral student, right? <clears throat> fellow, sorry, a postdoctoral fellow, and her husband was working with the government, right? And the lady got a teaching position in one university, right? And of course, the teaching position would definitely pay better than than what her husband was doing. But the conversation was not about who is going to be paid better; it was about where are we going to serve the lord very well right and they prayed about it and the lord instruction was that they should move and so the husband followed his wife and now when they moved to the same place he also got a job and they are doing ministry very well and building young adult fellowship and doing exploit you know and so i think (laughs) some of this conversation around yeah if you are competing on ego you know like because i'm a surgeon you don't have to become a that is not like robina said if you know that that is the calling of god upon your life and your skill set and everything has aligned to that that is a conversation you will have with your your partner to be and if the person is so adamant and is still being driven by ego then that is a different conversation no, no, no. Bro, i believe bro, yeah. bro, Josh, I, I want to be clear on this no mm-hmm. 
she shouldn't even have the conversation to start with. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why I say that is this? see, th this is my understanding of this thing. God has placed women in a unique position that there are some things they don't even have to deal with. You know, there are some things you, they don't even have to deal with. If the woman is fully persuaded, like you said, that this is the path God has for her to be a surgeon, from the first and second conversation with the potential suitor, that is the man, she should have known, oh, this per if I'm going to enter this relationship with this person, that means I'm going to jeopardize this. Then she just goes, you know, she doesn't even further, further that discussion. Because the point is this, if she, like we are discussing initially, if she understands her role or whatever, however you want to phrase it, as the woman or wife or help or helper, however you want to put it in that relationship, what that should tell her is that they should not conflict. So what God has called the man and his vision should not be in conflict with her own, if she's fully persuaded there in her own call, there should be an agreement. Of there should be an agreement, exactly. Okay. So, if there's if there's already that conflict, then it's not going to work. I mean, call there's it off. There's going to be a problem in the future. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just call it off. Yeah. And so I guess you know these people. What was the what was the? Did they end up marrying? No, they didn't end up marrying because the lady was not going to budge. Oh, I see. And he was not going to budge, so he ended up marrying a nurse. Yes. That fits his. That fits him. I mean, <laughs> a nurse is not working so much too <laughs> in this part I, of the world. I, well, you see, yeah. everybody has. The, everybody, everybody ha uh, is it has or have their own calling. Like for example, like me now, hmm. there are some people in some professions that I don't even bother thinking about them. Oh, should I? Am I? No, 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 no. Unless I'm like clear and fully persuaded that God is leading me to that person. Even at that, we'll have serious discussion to harmonize and know how the whole thing is going to work. I, I already know that. So there are some situations whenever when I when I even see it, ah, I don't even bother. Because I just find my way. Yeah, but sometimes I've also had I've, 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 I also know about a situation where the woman seemed as though she let it go. And when mm -hmm. the kids grew to a certain level, she wanted to go back. Yeah, okay. It, was, it now became like a conflict because the man felt that the thing had been put to rest, but this thing was still burning in her heart. And of course, it, it generated some issues. <laughs> it generated some issues, but you, she still kind of, I mean, okay, you said I should put it down for the kids. Now the kids have gone. So what else? What do you Also, oh, then it means that the man also lied to her, then, right? No, 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 they lied, said, to, they, they lied to themselves. You, you said I should put it down for the kids and the kids yeah, are now like gone. Yeah, what I was saying now, for the family purpose. Yeah, uh, and so if that that foundation... And so she yeah. agreed to do it for the kids, and though the kids grew up to a certain level, and maybe have gone to the university or are going yeah, to... Yeah, if that foundation has been... is that, if So if that foundation has been sorted out and you your agreement was in that, <laughs> then I don't see anything wrong with the woman Sister going princess. back. Yeah. Sister Princess, I always, I always, Sister Princess, I always get this feeling from these examples you are giving. Yes, there was a problem to even in the first place. Do you know why I say that? Because if this thing you are saying was is true, they agree. When the thing came up subsequently, I don't think it should have caused this kind of problem. When the man is already convenient with the woman just being at home and in. No, no, it in. doesn't. It doesn't matter. You know, this and, no, and this is the way I meet you at home, kind of thing. This is the now way I see this. Thing. Go out like him. She wants to. She's busy. No. Sometimes she comes back home after him. Sister so Princess. She's getting Sister upset. Princess. Sister Princess. I'm <laughs> going to. I'm going to say this thing again. There are two. There are, there are two scriptures that often come to my mind when these kind of discussions come. Up. Proverbs 26 and Proverbs 31, 10 to 31. Many people know the. 31 10 to 31 but proverbs 36 said what a faithful man who can find mm -hmm. is it no 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 proverbs many people many, many many would declare their goodness but a faithful man who can find i think proverbs 26 what it what why i bring i bring up those two those two parts is this a faithful man is a faithful man it doesn't matter the time it doesn't matter the year I mean, that's what faithfulness is. is exactly. Know? What did the Bible say? The Bible says that we should consider one another to elevate Joda even as better than ourselves. Hebrews 10, 24 says, let us consider one another to provoke oh, unto love. love and good yeah. works. Yeah. 
Why, you see, that's why I said when you're bringing all these issues, I, I'm already looking at it that there's already a problem. Oh, because if these two people, the husband and the wife, are busy serving God, following God, this thing won't be a problem, honestly. It won't be a problem. Yeah, man. There are very little things, but some people, they make it such a big thing. And so, sometimes you believe, sometimes I believe there's always a bigger problem. Uh, exactly. That, exactly. Yes. Yeah. And right. people will always pick up that little thing and, you know, yes. repeat and talk about it so much and make it look like, yeah, you know. So, I, I get your point and, and those are good points. Yeah. So, well, at least we get to know, even though we don't have it in points, like a man, <laughs> a man yes. expects this from a woman, <laughs> submiss, submission to a woman, a man is, I mean, the, what I, the key, I, the key uh, point I took from this uh, podcast today from you men is that, a man looks at submission as a woman fitting into the bigger yes. picture, and he's the hold, he's the he's the one that holds the bigger picture. Yes. And so the woman has to fit into his picture. Now, 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 just to clarify that, when I say the man holds the bigger picture, in essence, maybe Bro Joshua might also agree. What I mean by the man holding the bigger picture is number one, it is it was his vision when he was single. Yeah. Now, when he was about to get married, God will help him to expand that vision. Now, it is that expanded vision that the woman fits into. So it's not as if she's just fitting into oh his vision when he was single. No, it's that expanded vision that the woman is and fitting now includes into. Her. It's not even that it includes her. She customizes it. Okay. So it, it's more like okay. Let me use a practical. He has example. a master plan. Then she exactly. Puts now. She he, he lays the master plan down. It's now left for the woman to say, Oh, this is where the bathroom should be. This is the where the master bedroom or should it shouldn't be here, it should be here. You, you get that uh, so it's like an integrated whole that needs to come together. All right. You should you should you should let Obina be saying a lot of this so that the sisters will know that he's not he's not what they think he is. <laughs> <laughs> You should not be talking about that on our boss level, right? And, and, and. Because I think if you ask anybody, what do you think Obina thinks about it, they will paint a very extreme picture of a whole... Like, oh, because of all the extrapolation, he, goes with, he comes from all that, all that lineage that he started with. You know? Anyways, yeah, no, this is a good conversation for sure. Yeah, so, well, I hope that everybody enjoys this conversation and they can... Chime in with their comments and let us know what they like and what they want to add to these comments. I want men to really comment about this. I want men to put in their thoughts about submission. What is submission to a man? I want more men to chime in other top, maybe other things that we have not brought up. I don't know. Did you guys touch on your points? Um, th this is what I'm going to just add in um, in passing. Women, I'm going to speak to women. Women, please. Any man you want to. Just let me put it this way: If you if you decide to marry a man, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. If you decide to marry a man, just know that he's he has become your head. I don't want to sugarcoat it. Hmm. Why why I put it that way is because essentially what I'm trying to tell you is if you if you think this person can't be your head before you even commit, don't don't, don't, don't enter. Don't don't just don't enter. Don't enter. Yeah, marry somebody you can respect. Marry somebody you can respect that you. In fact, marry someone you expect to lead you. Okay. You people, you people might work out the details later, or but marry someone that you 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 believe that you're confident lead. in their leadership. Exactly, he's going to lead you right. That's what I'll say. All right. Well, that, that brings us to the end of this uh, this part of <laughs> this part on submission. I think we have really it's been a very long conversation, and I've been able to bring Brawby there to land. You no, know, it took him a, a time to take off his <laughs> There was some turbulence in the air, and then we landed safely. I think everybody now understands that we landed safely on a on on a landing that Bar Joshua agrees with. So there's an agreement at the end of the day. There that is an agreement. Yeah, that makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna we're going to say well. Another time, we'll have another conversation. We'll try to see how we can do Maybe we can do this weekly. We should have more of this conversation and we'll expand it to other things like Christian living and uh, many other topics that 
a man needs to be well-rounded man before getting yeah. marriage because marriage is a lot you know sometimes men don't really understand women they're like ah, i don't understand her <laughs> so sometimes we'll bring women also so that men yeah. can understand them and know what the woman is expecting when a woman is fighting against your submission what are you doing wrong you know what is yeah it? and i yeah and i think the virtual gives us the opportunity to bring other people in across yes yeah you know so we'll be bringing in more people that that we think would excuse me we'll have something to share that can benefit everybody so yeah. well i'm going to call it a day for this and then uh, that's 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 the end of this podcast see you uh, at the next podcast yeah yeah I... bye everybody <laughs> yeah bye everyone <laughs>